So yeah, I'm our fantastic sponsors is G4 Claims. And I'm talking really fast. It's 10 past five on a Thursday and the game kicks off. Uh, Wednesday and the game kicks off in 50 minutes. <laughs> and here's Nicole to tell you what G4 Claims day. Take it away, Nicole. Hi, guys. Hi, so hi. a quick, brief version of G4 Claims because I know we're trying to get away for the football. We are an accident management company. It's a full service. If you have been involved in an accident, Phone us first. If we can help you, we will. We'll, if not, we'll point you in the right direction. If you've been in an accident, it wasn't your fault. You don't want to claim your own insurance policy. You don't want to pay your excess. You want that other person's insurance to pick up that tab. Why should you affect your policy? Use G4 claims so we can provide you with a like-for-like -like replacement hire vehicle. We can get your personal injury compensation if required, if you're injured in the accident. If your car is repairable, We'll get it sent to a, an approved body shop or someone of your choice we can use as well. If your car's written off, we'll recover the full amount for the pre-accident value so you're never out of pocket. And everything we do is free of charge. We bill it all to the at-fault insurance. So please, guys, give us a phone, 01698 767172. Call G4 Claims today. Not at fault claims. Made easy. Made easy. Made easy. Oh. Right, let's welcome the football daft a man who, with a 10 year stint at Aberdeen, made over 300 appearances. He's now the goalkeeping coach in his hometown of Paisley with St. Mern. It's Jamie Langfield. Jamie, how are you doing, mate? You alright? Not bad, mate. How are you? I'm all good. All good. We've finally got you uh, on the podcast because we have wanted you on here for ages. <laughs> Aye. Aye. It's only took us about 12 months to get Aye. Aye. It feels like that. And we, we, did, we did have you uh, booked in to be on the show. It was. I think it was the exact day that St. Marin had the deal with the goalies getting yeah. COVID. Yeah. But because I'm just, I was just looking it up. You actually re-registered as a player, didn't you, to, to sit on the bench? Ah, yeah. I had to. I had to re-register. It was. It was crazy. Up until about five minutes to twelve, we had up until five to twelve. To twelve o'clock to register a goalie, and at five to twelve, we still hadn't registered somebody. Uh, the day of the game, so I was technically playing, and I'm I'm four stone overweight, you know, and I'm, I'm you know I mean? and yeah. honestly, I actually tried the goalie strip on. I thought, you know, I'm going, I'm going to fucking embarrass myself if I have to get in this pitch. But but do you know what? I was willing to do it just because you know, I don't know if you it's know me. It's a laugh, It's a laugh. Now. It's a laugh. You're now. It's a laugh. Now. It's a laugh <laughs> Half the people have laughed at me during my career, so I thought, what's well, another fucking day got to do with me? I may as well just do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but I'm not going to lie, when I walked into the changing room and Bobby's Lamar was sitting there, I thought, Aye. thank God for that, because, as I say, I tried to go with strip on and it was, it was a bit tight. I was, I was still carrying a wee bit of that lockdown weight, so, <laughs> no, I was buzzing with that, but I it was up until about 5 to 12 before we could get Bobby registered, so technically I was the only goalkeeper registered at the club. Wow. That's crazy, that, isn't it? That, that's scary, though, especially like with lockdown that. We've all put on a bit of timber, haven't we, Gary? Fucking damn putting man, guilty. Fucking man. It's not, I mean, but, but, I just nervous going back to work. Putting, I've not a pair of denims on for about 14 months. Mate, Martin. denims? You don't need to put on a fucking leotard when you're going back to your work, man. Hick off. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, Dan. Ah, you know the, worst, you know the worst thing about it? All these strips are now that fucking tight fitted shit. Aye, you know I mean? oh, you, man. It doesn't, it doesn't work well. I, I, give me the, the old school baggy shit. It's, they get the sleeves down to here. But now I'm the baggy yeah, You're lucky. Okay. When, when I put one of the tops on, I look like a bag of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what, um, what's, what's, what, who did you. Did you like football growing up? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. We're trying to get, la trying to get Jamie Langfield on for fucking over a year and you're going to make him fucking go after five minutes. So, uh, no. Jamie, did you, did you like football? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I was into wrestling. <laughs> right, Jamie, cheers for coming on, mate. Thanks for the best, no, man. I've, I've got a real question. I've got a real question. Right. Now, Jack Anik came to St Mirren, right, and he hadn't had the best of times at Ibrox, but he's one of the best goalies in the league now. Do you think that's, all, co you think that's all cause of you? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, listen, it's certainly not all cause of me. I think, oh, and I, I think it's all 
I can only put on like training sessions for the guy, but at the end of the day, he's the one that's going to walk over the white lines. It's it's my job's like try to make his training as enjoyable and as as varied as I possibly can. I, I I'm used to that training, but it's boring all the time. I used to think mm-hmm. training was always boring. I called it a Scooby Doo effect. I mean, Scooby Doo, you get a fucking plant run when he's running. It's just the same angle all the time. <laughs> That's what I felt training was like. So I, I, I thought I'd mix it up a wee bit. What I do is maybe no right, but it's, it seems to work with the likes of Jack and obviously Backlab last year. So it's it, it, it's going well, but nah, 90, 98% of it's all done to him and his hard work and his determination and the way he goes about himself on a Saturday. It's, the rest of it's just everything else. He just couldn't get a game really at Rangers, no, I mean, there was no much game time for him. I wouldn't they say look back and go he never he had a bad time at Rangers, he never got a chance, but Aye. you can see him now. Do you know what I mean? Like no, no, speaking like, to Jack speaking to Jack, he's listen, he's 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 had a chance to play for Rangers. No, I mean he's he's delighted that. Does he, he he wants to, does he want to get back there? Of course he wants to get back to the big stage. And that's what he thinks. Sometimes you need to take a step back to go forward again. Mm-hmm. And, and that's mm-hmm. a good thing. And, and he's realised that. No, I mean, he's came to a club where he is technically, he's, a lot of people are showing him a lot of love. He's technically the main man. Do you know what I mean? And, that he's, and that's shown in his performances. Aye. And hopefully that's set some stead and going forward. Obviously, we don't want to get rid of the guy. He's, he's, he's been different class since he comes in. But I'm sure if he keeps on playing the way he's playing, and I said, I, I said that, and the manager said it as well, It'll be hard to keep on him. Credo has got Credo has got a theory about him, hasn't he, Credo? What did I say? I can't remember. Oh. Credo, Credo oh, thinks he's got. Credo 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 <laughs> sent us a one of his drunken rabble fucking voice notes one night saying, I'll tell you this, he's heard it here first. Jack Anik is going to sign for Selic. The reason. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up, Jamie. But the way I, I had it, I just thought, remember Mark Brown done that? He never got much of a chance at Rangers. And then he was at Cali Fissel uh, and fucking, he was he was superb. Uh, and then he went to Celtic. I just kind of thought, I bet that ends up happening. I totally forgot I said that, but that's good. It's uh, good. I, I speak to Mark, I can't see things something like that happen. And I don't think he's that. I don't think he's that. I don't think he'd won that in his life. Don't, 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 don't think his lodge would be too happy. <laughs> 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 yeah, Jamie, see, I, I, I grew up idolising goalies, man. I loved goalies. Andy Gorham was my hero. Uh, Phil Snelders, I know. Andy Dibble, who else? Yeah, Go- Van Hoydonk. <laughs> he was my favourite outfield, outfield player, too. But who was your who was your goalie heroes as, a, as grown up? Andy, Andy Gorham. Is was, it? Was one of my idols. Peter Schmeichel, obviously, because uh, probably more of the height thing with me. Um, but but Andy for the way he conducted himself, the way he played in goals was just incredible. To say some of the saves he like, he was like a proper goalie, a shot stopping goalie. You don't you don't really see that now. It's all but you play it for the back, you do this. Andy Gorham was a match winner. Do you know what I mean? And it's the same as I look at I look at Griggs the new Griggs is the exact same. He's in the same sort of mould, match winner. He's playing with all for him. You're going to be called upon once or twice during a game, and that's when they need to make these big saves. And these guys can do that. And, so, I mean, that's probably something that I could, I could make a hundred saves in a game, but I'd still make that one. Fuck up. That is interesting, because I always remember uh, reading or watching an interview with Andy Gorham, and he did say he went for playing at Hibs, where he'd be busy all afternoon, to go into Rangers, where he's like, you, you need to, you're going to be involved in about two or three shots max, so you need to be ready for it. It's uh, mental to think as a goalkeeper for a different team, you could be a completely different player just because of who's who's in your team, isn't it? Aye. Aye, aye. The big, the big thing for me is like goalies is and it's it's like playing for the, the old firm. Um you go for some place that you're making six or seven saves, that masks the fact that you're making one or two mistakes in a game. You can't right. make the one or two mistakes at right. uh, Celtic or Rangers. That's it's, it's impossible. It goes right. in the net. Do you know what I mean? That's that's the difference. So that's why it kind of masks it, and that's why it's always harder going for a, a lower club than the likes of Rangers and Celtic when you've so used to making so many saves, but the mistakes just get masked over, and it's that's what kills you sometimes. Aye. I think Aye. that's what Rab, Rab Douglas suffered for that a bit because I remember being buzzing when we signed when Celtic signed Rab Douglas because I'd I'd seen him playing for Dundee against us so often, and he was a fucking outstanding goalie for them. And then Aye. when he came to Celtic, I think it was just the concentration thing. A lot of the time Aye. he made some mistakes. So, Jamie, what about Saint Marin? How far can you go this season? 
Listen, we're, we're in a good position just now. That's 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 the main thing. I think if you look at it now, where we've been in the past few seasons, I say if he if Andy said you're sitting the top six with two games left to go, albeit you've got to go to Ibrox on <laughs> Saturday, um, I think mm-hmm. you'd be you'd bite their hand off for it. Um, but mm-hmm. as we say, we just keep on building. I think maybe one of draws there, the four draws, kind of held his back a wee bit, but. We, we need to understand we, we had to play it and it's no more than morning we had to play eight games in like February which is mental aye, and aye. Now, we've, now we've only got two games in the next six weeks Wow! so it's it's absolutely crazy but um, these things it's it's for us to be in the position we're in it's, it's brilliant it's brilliant for the club brilliant for all the hard work the, the manager and the boys have put in and as I say we just keep on I think the new model which the man is look up the way stop looking behind your shoulder and like right. where he should be, do you know what I mean? Let's try and look up the way and see who we can right. catch on, who can catch us. Aye. It's been an interesting season for likes of St Mern and Livingston. And there's always a couple of teams every year that that, that surprise everybody in, in a good Aye. run of form. St Mern, I mean, December, he's had a great result in December. I can't mind who, who he's were playing. I think, um, I think it was 3-2. I think it was 3-2. I think it was some guy. I can't remember. I think it was the goalie. The goalie. Aye, so... He's, uh, made up for a, he's made up for it a couple of weeks ago at Park Aid. I think it's the only team. It's one against Rangers this season, if I'm right. I, I can't uh, remember. Uh, I, anyway. fuck, mate, I was sitting in here fucking nearly... <laughs> Fucking Cobra Kai, my Terry. I was fucking going to my nut that night, honestly. Aye, that was a, that was a bad night, wasn't it? Well, the best, the best part of it was, I didn't even know the score until I went into the group chat. And I was like, oh, wait, what, what are you two talking about? I'm fucking dancing about the living room with a dafty. Uh, the, 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 worst, the worst thing is fucking Davis equalising, then he's got the park score. What the fuck's going on here? Because we, we couldn't believe it. We thought, we, we scored, we, obviously Davis scored, me. we thought, ah, oh, fuck, here we go, 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. What we are, we are out in our ass, completely out in our ass. The boys have put so much in it, and then we actually had a look around and we thought, Rangers haven't got any defenders on here. Is that right? Right? Just... They, they, they just they just went for it and attacked. Mm-hmm. And then we get the corner and I was like, oh, here we go. And then Gregsy makes an unbelievable save and just thankful for us, it just drops it on McCarthy's feet and wow. this is the next round. So it was, it was, it was a great feeling. It was great for great for our boys and a great thing as far as on, but not for usual. But the, the thing is, before the game, me and Gredo were talking right before the game, and Jim Goodwin was getting interviewed, and Gredo actually texts me literally what I was thinking. Right, he yeah. looked so cool and confident that night, didn't he, Gredo? Remember oh, saying 100%. that? I I was like this is the, uh, this could go this could go down and like, just the way he was talking about it no fear in the guy whatsoever no. like, uh-huh. he just looked yeah. so relaxed man he looked mm-hmm. so and uh, uh, to come across like Jamie he's, I, all, he's always like he's, 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 he's got all that he's he's got that that's the way Aye. he portrays I can say on the, the sideline he's a he's a maniac he kicks every ball but Aye. when he's when he's doing his he's press and he's speaking to folk and he's speaking to the thing. He comes across, and he is—he is one of the most positive guys you'll meet. And I think you need to be like that. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You need to be like that, and the job he does, and he, he comes across really positive. And it, it, I think it shows on, in the way our players are playing this year. And as I say there's no point showing fear against Aye. the likes of Rangers and Celtic because every pitch is doing to get beat anyway. So we may as well just go out and enjoy it. You, you, you were telling us there during uh, the teammates thing that we did for Patreon, which you can see if you're uh-huh. listening, by the way. You were telling us about that we totally forgot you were. You were at Dundee at the height. Uh, what was his face again? What did you call him? The Stefano. So t- tell us a bit about that. What was your experience like? Because, I mean, you, how many years were you there? About six or seven years at Dundee? I was there. I was there six years, and it was Peter Marr, obviously, chairman at the time, brought in Gio. And the next thing you know, the Benetti's came in. Right. Then it, it was just this influx of foreign players. You had your Caballeros, Carranzas. What um, a player Caballero was. Right. Honestly, right. Saras, Juan Sara. And these boys were like proper, proper players. And like we, we were flying. We were, we were up there. We weren't, we were only competing, but it was good to see a Dundee side competing at the top end of the table because of the mm-hmm. type of players we were. That was, that was a great Dundee side to watch. They were excited mm-hmm. to Aye. watch, man. Aye. Is that, was that Keith's feeling and all that as well? Aye, Keith's feeling. A damn chute, maybe, and all that. Would you, would you call that crackpot? That crackpot that, crack crack that crack pot. Pot. Yeah, crack pot played from Newcastle. Nim Zadzi. Nim Zadzi. Funny story about him. Funny story about him. Boy, uh, Mark Robertson, who uh, I'm really pally with, he shared a room with Georgie. And you know Georgie was nuts. Remember that time he volleyed the, the board and all that? He claimed the Newcastle. That's right. That's right. So, 
we're staying at hotel, so we this thing we stayed away the night of four games, every game, for some reason. I don't know. We'd play at home and we'd be staying at Kamrusty, <laughs> even though my house was like two minutes away then. Uh, so we're in the hotel and Robbo's walked into his room and he just says that Nanzadi's uh, sitting with all his gear off, pair of pants on and a hat, just sitting at the edge of the bed, just looking at the telly and the telly wasn't on. Honestly. And he's By fucking way, come running. Was, he's come running he's, like wait, that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll be talking about the same guy here. Because it was to, it was to Murray Kitts Bayer that kicked him. Kitts Bayer, sorry. Sorry, to Murray Kitts Bayer. Aye, my thing. So it was Kitts. Kitts, right. So maniac, right. So he's sitting there, heart on. By the bath's running. So he's <laughs> Robbo's walked in the room, right. He's looking at the telly. Walked in, said nothing. Robbo just put his bag on and came along to my room. And he actually said, can I sleep in your room? <laughs> I know where I get back in there. <laughs> he was fucking nuts. Honestly, just the most dead fan face in the world. But he was fucking crazy. It sounds but, like he's in his fucking room doing the fucking scene for Apocalypse now, I, man. Just stop honestly, fucking dancing. <laughs> Robo, Robo, Robo proper shat his pants. But no, he was, he had cats and everything. And then, lo and behold, fucking Ravenelli comes in. Wow, what all? Honestly, hey, exactly. what, what, what are you thinking there, right? You're like Caballero <laughs> kicks by a, you're sitting going, Yeah, hey, we've just went and fucking signed Ravanelli today. Do you know what I mean? Like, and can he just, can, can he just on the phone to Maradona, Ravanelli <laughs> swagging about, man? Are you know, sitting going, What the fuck's going on here? Maradona's <laughs> on the phone to Baggio. <laughs> honestly, it's fucking, it was, it was, honestly, it was a mental time, but Rava was like, Ravanelli was what, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And like he was staying at a hotel in Dundee, and my flat was like two minutes along the road. So we went out, me, him, uh, and Craig Burley went out for a night out. So <laughs> that's funny. Imagine, <laughs> imagine being in that pub or something, but then to Langfield Burley and Ravin Early. <laughs> right. So we're in this, we're in this pub right now. We're in the, we're in the, we're in the nightclub, we're in the Fat Sam's. So in the Fat Sam's, right? Aye. So Rav is like, mate, what, what do you drink? And I'm like. So I got him, it was, Magnus was just out of the time, right? So I've got him on the Magnus, right? So he's bringing pints of Magnus. So the next thing you know, fucking half a nut, in the taxi, back to my flat, right? So I've run into my bed, fell asleep, came out the next morning, and here's Ravenelli sleeping on my tea, comatose on my tea, And I'm like, I went, Rava, Rava. He's like, ah. <laughs> fucking silly Italian accent. He's like, eh. And he went, he, went, he went like to me. He went like to, what are you doing in my room? I'm like, what are you doing in my room? You're my fucking flat. <laughs> he woke up that. Like, like, do you want a coffee? He's like, no, no, I better get, I better get back. And he honestly stored it at the flat. Honestly. <laughs> I was like, no, the worst thing about it was, see, because there was nearly like, phones or anything like that, you could take pictures then. You'd you know have I mean? been taking a oh, selfie. Man. Honestly, I, I'd, I'd have been like that, and I've done everything with it. Honestly, I'd have been on Twitter, Instagram. What are you doing in my room? <laughs> what are you doing in my room? I'm like, you're in my flat. He just got up and stowed it away, man. Oh, that man. is but brilliant. That, but that's the type of guys that, that were at the club at the time, and the, the, as much as they were like big stars, they were. So down to earth, they were brilliant to <laughs> work way and train way, but also great on a way for the Mate, club as well. So I mean. Like that. Wait, I mean, you ever think, man, you'd have Ravenelli <laughs> sleeping in your couch, man? No, <laughs> and like, that's the thing, that's the thing I'm, I'm spewing about because you can't, I couldn't take a 40. So if uh, I tell somebody, he's like, don't believe you, don't believe you. I'm like, well, it's my love against yours. So, <laughs> so you can get Ravenelli on. You think of Ravenelli? <laughs> <laughs> you got you still speak to him? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's fucked off. Same with Kenija. They ain't no time for us now. <laughs> <laughs> what were they like in training? But did they take with they with they like obviously Ravenelli, a big pedigree coming to a team like Dundee. He disrespected Dundee, but you never thought you'd see something like that happening. What were they like in training? Were they still look as professional as ever? And like Kenija didn't train. Kenija didn't train. Kenija used to play. Play shit in with his boy behind the goal. He used to be training and he just came out and he started doing all his, he started doing all his flicks and all that and just playing with his, with his boy behind the goal. And you'd be like, ah, he's no training. And you'd be like, wow. he's just, first few weeks, you'd be like, he's just there for a jolly up. And I remember his first game against Motherwell. He's like, go to the halfway line. He's drove, 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 got to about 25 yards out and then just chipped the ball in the That's net. Right. And we were all that. 
wow. And he just kept on doing it and doing it and doing it. And we're, we're, so Benetti just let him do whatever he wanted. He could uh-huh. do whatever he wanted. Honestly, he was just a proper culture hero. He looked that after is- his body. Uh, and he obviously he's moved to Rangers as well so it just shows you how well he actually done for uh, Rangers I think they just paid over a million quid for him as well so. uh, nah, he was still he was, he was a class actor Rangers man he was, like, he was quite, still it's wise, just a it? pure mental time in Scottish football it's just another <laughs> one of these stories uh, isn't it? remember just... Remember when Sky used to actually give his money and teams could sign <laughs> players? That was a good place, wasn't it? Uh, I, don't, I, don't like, I don't think it was the Sky money, it was Gina's as the Dundee money. <laughs> I think it was... Aye, there, 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 there was a wee bit of fucking... There was a wee bit of ducking and diving going on there, I mean, but we'll not get into that, no, I mean... <laughs> let's not let the truth get in the way of a good fucking story, man. Were your directors, were your directors best mate be Saddam Hussein and he's his lawyer? <laughs> Go <laughs> right there. Fuck, <laughs> oh, that's right. Remember that fucking. Fucking. Rather than Eddie sleeping on your couch, you said, I'm coming to pick him up in an Uber. <laughs> brilliant. Oh, oh, no, you've lost me. That's beautiful. Oh, that's fucking brilliant, man. <laughs> well, do you look? Do you look back on that time in your career, Jamie, and go, that's why the best times are? Or is your best time at Aberdeen or whatever? Oh, no, definitely. Just because I, I grew up through the youth system and all that, and I was there with like, my pals and all that, and then all these no. boys just started to come in. That was brilliant. But obviously for the, the nucleus of my playing career, definitely Aberdeen was, was my best. My best. But, but, but definitely if you're going through a youth system and bringing into the first team football, that was a great environment. It went to, as mental as it was, it was it was it was brilliant, and to get to train and play with the likes of these guys was just on another level. Aye. Was it was it, did Jimmy Calderwood sign you for Aberdeen? Aye, oh, Jimmy Calderwood signed me on a pre contract for Dunfermline, right? Right. So he so he signed me for Dunfermline, right? So I've went and done all the deal with my agent, signed the thing. So I'm like, Missy's like buzzing, signed a, a year with Dunfermline. I'm like, Jimmy's told me that I'm going to start or I'm going to get a chance to start, so on and so forth. So I'm like, right, okay. Went, me and my mates went to Father Aki on a holiday. Oh. Right, so <laughs> sitting, next, sitting next to the pool, right, so I can pass out my skull. So that, that bought the daily record. Remember, it used to be the day after. That's right, aye, abroad. Aye, when you're on holiday, aye, aye that's right, aye. Need I pick up the back page. I'm drunk, remember, and I see a picture of Jimmy Calderwood with Aberdeen fucking scar. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What happened there? I'm like, what's going on here? And uh, so I phoned him, I phoned back, I, Jimmy's left to go to uh, Aberdeen. I'm like, oh, fucking brilliant. So Derek Stilley had just left from Fernland. He was a mm. number one. So I was like, right, okay, at least I'll have a chance to play. So I've got back. Fucking first thing I pick up the paper again. Derek still is re-signed for Dunfermline. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is going on here? Honestly, it was just a make up. But then, through his word, probably about three months later, JC came back in from again and, and re-signed me to Aberdeen. He said, I'll take you to Aberdeen when, uh, when I can get you in a free contract. And I signed, I signed a three-year deal at Aberdeen. So he was true to his word and he came back in for me. So no, I, was, I was delighted with that. Jamie, I mean, see, was a right good manager, wasn't he? For me, he was the best manager I've ever worked with. Um, he yeah. tactics for everything. Honestly, tactics for everything. Uh, I remember we went to Bayern Munich, obviously, to play again in the Allianz Arena. So we're two, two each for the <laughs> two each the, two each for the first leg. So we're playing the Allianz Arena. Sixty thousand folk. They've got Sanyo, Lucio, Oliver Kahn in goals. They've got I think they had four World Cup winners: Tony Cruz, Lamb, you name it, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy's pulled up his pad, right? And he's got the team down, right? And he's actually went, <clears throat> big question marks over him. And he's pointing Wally Sanyo, he just won the World Cup. <laughs> he's like, I, 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 I think he could be go to it. <laughs> he's actually sitting just laughing, thing. Is he taking the piss? He said, they're unbelievable world stars. But about two seconds into the game, they'd hit the bar. I think we were four down in the first half. It was just a totally different experience. And he sat in the, the change room, rather than it being an experience, all the boys are like, the, at the Allianz Arena, there's a swimming pool in the actual changing room. 
Really? So boy, he's tried yeah. he's team talk, right? So he's all the boys are doing like dive bombers and all that in the summer. So no gain a fuck, right? And Jimmy's like, he's raging ways, absolutely raging ways. We'd been beat off by him in the Allianz Arena. Thought it was a chance for him. But that was, that was the type of guy he was. And he was he was absolutely brilliant for me. What I want to know, did you manage to get all of our cans tap at the end of the game? Mate, I certainly did. I've got it hey, in the garage. I actually waited, and the, this is how he went nuts at me as well. He fell out with me because I waited at the tunnel for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for <laughs> can. Because you know how the Germans, after every game, they, they stay in the day, they hang with the fans and all that. Aye. Aye. There for Aye. So I'm last on the thing, and all the boys are like, come on, you better get in there. I'm like, I'm a fuck. This is a one and only thing for me. I'm <laughs> coming in here. <laughs> I'm coming here until he came back in. I don't know what he's done with me. He actually, in fairness to him, he took my strip off me anyway, so he's probably what? washing his motor with it. <laughs> 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 Oliver, <laughs> Oliver, if you're listening, Oliver, I just want to know, have you still got Langfield's thought? <laughs> but no, he was, he was, he was, uh, he, he gave me, and it, it, it was true, he's bloody, I waited on the tunnel, so, Nah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, man. Do you, do you remember getting back in, but and seeing Calderwood after that? Do you remember what he said to you, no? When you I, no, that's that what, when, I, when, I walked, when I walked in, he was sitting like in a huff, like in a proper huff, because all the boys were just like jumping in the pool and all that. Like, it, was like, <laughs> it was like a 18 to 30. <laughs> <laughs> jumping about, and he's like in a proper huff, and you're like, Okay, you've just been right. beat up uh, by a Munich. Only, only time I've ever heard the account going in an 18-30 in Munich. <laughs> 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 Jamie, can I, 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 need, I need to read this bit out, man, right, and explain this, right? right. I mean, obviously, you can't believe everything that you read off Wikipedia, right? But in June 2007, while enjoying his stag par- party in Magaluf, <laughs> he had a drunken <laughs> argument with Aberdeen manager Jimmy Calderwood after bumping into him in a chance encounter. <laughs> with the incident putting his future in Dundee at doubt, Langfield stated he wasn't able to remember what happened. He was so drunk. It's true. I was, I was, I was, I was on my stag do. I was on my stag do with all my mates. So I think this was the, the third day yeah. in. I think it was the third day in. So I've no slept three days. You know what I mean? I, I'm no. I like a drink, but I'm not a big drinker. But the boys kept me topped up, topped up. Aye. So I think it was at the Champions League final. So I'm sitting in a bar. But this time I fell asleep. So I'm outside the bar in the sun and I've had a wee, a wee light pee, right? So I've had a wee pee, right? That's all right. <laughs> An accident. That's literally a, a wee accident, right? Aye. So next thing I know, I'm getting carried up to, I get carried up to my hotel. Um, but this time I hadn't known that JC had walked into the bar and seen me. So did you, you didn't I, even I didn't, know he was in Magaluf then, didn't, huh? I didn't even know. I, I knew he was in Magaluf, but I didn't even know he'd seen Aye. me. So... Oh, you must have thought uh, you were tripping that you're not, mate. I, so no, this is the best thing. So everything was fine. So so day four, I'm out obviously flying home. So I'm all home. I get home. Day five, my agent phones me. Uh, Jimmy wants to speak to you. I'm like, oh, what for? <laughs> he's like, um, right, uh, he says, he's got, he, needs to, he just needs to speak to you. So he phones me, JC phones me. And I'm like, are you gaffer? He's like, all right. <laughs> uh, I'm like, <laughs> he, he went, um, I'm going to put you in the transfer list. And I'm like, what? He says, what you done was unbefitting of an Aberdeen player. And I'm like, Gaffer, what have I done? I went, Gaffer, what have I done? Because <laughs> I couldn't even remember. <laughs> right? I didn't even remember I'd peed myself. So I actually get told, I'm actually getting told this. He says, it's unbefitting of a, a, a Aberdeen player. So I'm like, right, okay. So they just offered me a three-year deal. So that get took off the table. Um, oh. Rangers had come in for me. Rangers came in for me to be, go there as a second choice. So Jimmy turned them down for that. And I'm getting married in about a week later. A week later. So I had no contract. No chance of going elsewhere. Couldn't remember any of it. That was the best thing about it. I'm like, mm. I, don't, I don't know what I've done. I'm asking my mates and all that, but it wasn't even them that took me up. It was two guys at Jimmy know that took me here to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like... Right, I, I, I don't know what's going on. So I, I didn't know what's going on. So, But I took I took it in the chin. So I took it in the chin. I said, right, okay, that's the way you see it. It's unfitting and that. Uh, Aberdeen player, I, I get all that. And I took that right in the chin. So I put the phone down. 
having to explain it to the new wife's TV. So <laughs> that went down like a fucking <laughs> a, a fart in a space suit. Um, <laughs> and she's she's just been like, right, okay, well, you just need to look, just keep working hard, try and get back in, so on and so forth. Phone goes again about 10 minutes later. I, honestly, this is not a word of lie. I goes, Gaffer, he's like, I, uh, I'm just off uh, the phone to Big Ek. I'm like, uh, are you right, Gaffer? Uh, you've been called up by Scotland. You have to go to the Faroe Islands. You're joking. I know. Uh, I'm like, what? He's like, you have to go to the Faroe Islands. He's like, I said, when? He says, the morrow. He says, you'll be back on Friday. I'm like, Gaffer, I get married on Saturday. He's like, it doesn't matter. So I had to... It doesn't matter. Can you not believe it? Well, it? That is... It was mental, mental. And then, two, I came back for pre-season. JC was still... Wasn't he talking to me? Um... I'd missed out the first three league games of the season. Derek Souter started. Good old like that one. <laughs> um, so he started, and then we were in a, just a team meeting, and he hadn't, he hadn't spoke to me for weeks. He just kept on telling me to work hard. So I was sitting there on a team meeting, and I remember sitting up in the back, next to me, Barry Nicholson. We're playing Nepal. First time the club have played in Europe in about 10 years, right? So it's the <clears> first qual- the qualifying stage, and I've, I've, he's pulled all the sheep. He hadn't spoke to anything, and I went like Baz. Baz, am I fucking playing? And he's like, I think so. I said, that's my name at the top of that, isn't it? He's like, aye. And he just he walked by me. And all he said to me is, you're back in. That's aye. all he said to me. And that was the only other time he spoke to me. Wow. Mental. Fucking hell, man. Fuck Don't fuck with JC, man. Oh, oh no. No, no, no. Listen, <laughs> I, took, I, I took my medicine. And there's been so many so many people asking me about this over the years. What did you do? Did you did you have a fight with him? Did you punch him? Did you? Do you mean I've had I've, I've had everything thrown at me, and all it was was third day in my thingy. I had a wee, had a wee accident, oh, which so was wrong. Wait, 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 all you did was push yourself. Aye, man. Fucking a wee accident. I said we've all done it. We've all done it. And it's, honestly, and the Aberdeen fans turned against me and everything because oh. I supposedly said that I wanted to go to Rangers and I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that, and all it was was just literally just because of that. Oh. But Jamie, you had one of the most bizarre injuries in football, right? After spilling boiling water on your foot, Is that right? right? Sorry. How'd that happen? Right. Truth of the story is, I Aye. didn't drop the thing, right? That's, did Jimmy put it on you? No, we were travelling for some reason. Mark McGee going and he said that it'd be very good for us to drive to Aberdeen to Warwickshire. <laughs> See, they get a plane, so so we get the bus down. So we're on the bus. There's no hot water on the bus. So the boys, we stopped at a place called Port Lethen, just outside Aberdeen at Yazda, and got a kettle. So put the kettle on the side of the thing where the microwave and that is, just left it there, so it's clicked on. So I'm standing at the table talking to one of the boys, and as we're coming into Dundee, right. the drivers went round the corner. This thing's just clicked, so it's just boiled. Things just <laughs> fell off the side. I've got flip-flops on and a sock. So the trainers, boiling water straight in my foot. What Honestly, hell, man. It, it was the most horrific thing I've ever felt in my life. I've actually got my oh. fit. So, so, you know the wee toilets in the, you get the wee toilets in, the, in the, the thing? I've got my fit. I so I'm standing one. outside the toilet with my fit in the wee, the wee sink, trying to get cold water on it, right? And I could actually feel my skin just coming away. Oh, oh my God. Honestly, it was horrific. So I went pure grey. The dogs right. gave me all sorts of drugs to calm the pain. And yeah. and Mark McGee went ah, I, it's all right. We'll make it to Darlington before we. I'm like Darlington. They they, they kept me in the bus till Darlington. We we're at Dundee. I, I went off to Darlington before I go to a hospital. Go to a hospital. Oh, that Holy fuck! Shut up. What is it with goalies and mad fucking injuries? Remember, Canizares dived and grabbed the iron. He dropped the iron and he grabbed it with his bare hands and fucking oh, yeah. missed the Champions League final oh. or something because of it, mine. <laughs> We're off on that. That's why. <laughs> but no, aye. that's aye. another one. I got I get slaughtered for dropping my kettle and my thing, but it wasn't. It was just strong, just like me. Unfortunate. It was it, but honestly two weeks. Two weeks. So I've got this thing, I got all the skin cut away and it was red and so on and so forth. So I've come back up the road after like 10 days. And that so they got uh Sharpie a physio at the time, get this guy in for the army who de- deals with wounds. War wounds, right? Mm. So I'm thinking I'm out here for like six weeks and all that, right? I'm thinking, mm. fucking hell. He said, big man, he said, see if that was out in the thing. He said, you'd have been straight back out with your fucking boot on. He said, can you put that on? He said, he said, can you put up with pain? I'm like, aye. He said, well, you can train. Honestly, I've trained really? the next day. Aye. He said, if you can, <gasps> if you can put up with pain, man. just go on it. Because it's not going to get any worse. So he just strapped it up. 
I just went out and trained. And the next did you day. train the next day? I trained the next day. Fucking hell, man. The Saturday was the game where Celtic beat them 9 9. You must have got get pelted for that one, did you know? The 9 0. That was not a, a great, great Is game. Is it a dark day? I mean, it was a dark day. I, I, Listen, I blame all... Paul Hartley. I blame I, Paul Hartley. I blame Paul Hartley. I also blame uh, big. Who was the big? Was it Thomas Rogney? He got sent off as well, didn't he? Aye. Big man gets sent off. So you know what Celtic like, Park's like. The pitch just became bigger because there was less players on it. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, first first penalty, then another penalty, then another penalty. So we got to half time. We thought, oh, we're doing all right. Four 0 done. And then we're like, we'll keep it tight for the next ten minutes. Then Josh McGinnis. When the second off. <laughs> then Josh McGinnis <laughs> scores. The fifth one, Heda, fairly 18 yards right in the top corner, OG. I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. And then the next thing I look up at the clock and it's 79 minutes and they're singing, we want 10. And I'm like, oh no. And I always remember getting after the game, uh, absolutely gut-wrenching, gutted, right? Took my gloves off. It was a wet day, took my gloves off, fucked them in the bin, took my boots off, they went in the bin as well. I wasn't keeping them. Sitting up in the back of the bus. Emotional, no green, but just like that way, what the fuck's just happened? Yeah, well. And Mark McGee came up to me, the manager came up to me and went like to me, we signed these gloves. He took my gloves out the bin and then asked me to sign them. And it's the first time I've ever went like a manager, are you taking the fucking piss? And he's like, no, you want to sign them for me, I want to keep these. Why? I don't, what? I, I, I don't know. Why would he want to keep them? Because he's just watched, he's just watched his team beating beating Aberdeen nine nine. Hi, two, nice two. Honestly, I, I could not believe it unless it was some sort of sick thing that he wanted. He was to wanting do. ten and all. Uh, we want nine. We want ten. That mob are always singing they want ten, but they never fucking get it, Jamie. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you fucking arsehole, you. <laughs> <laughs> and all that, Jamie, uh, you were actually in goals the very first game I took my wee boy to. It was uh, one on and Common scored. Oh, and do you know what? By the yeah, way, you any fucking good news for me? No, but listen, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you the good part of this. See at half time, remember they had Karen Gillen for, for Doctor Who uh, doing the draw at half time, right? Uh, and the Doctor Who music came on and my wee boy got that fear he wanted to leave and I never seen the fucking goal. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you? I <laughs> <Where> did that. <laughs> well that was that was the game. I just obviously just been come back after the brain hemorrhage and that was my That's first right. game of the se- right. first game of the season, mm-hmm. and it was like we were doing well. I think it was like the eighty third minute. We trickly crossed the front post and I let it get through me. Honestly, they talk about like people wanting people dead and all that. Man, you should have seen the tweets and the texts. I was, I was really? getting there. It was horrific. But I just, you just, I just got on with it because it was like stupid stuff like you should have died and all that. You just think, right, oh, okay. I but, but do you know the thing? I read these things and I, I know people take it personally. I just think, come on, you wouldn't say that. To, you wouldn't say that to my face. Aye. So unless Aye. you get the, the balls to say you it to my face. You know what, Jamie? I want to touch on that actually because I, Stephen, you you were wanting to speak about that as well, weren't you? You had that. Aye, because I just uh, I know like you were uh, saying like you took seizures and all that, mate. Is that Aye. right? Aye. I was the same, mate. I was in the hospital for like nearly four months. I took seizures and I thought like I thought I was on the road out, mate. Do you know what I mean? Aye, so that's horrible, that, man. Did, I was in the hospital for aging. It's like suspected meningitis it was I had but I took like seven or eight seizures and get lumbar punctures and all that mate you know what I mean so I kind of it's no nice to do it at that point did you think your career was over basically at that point aye well the thing that happened with me was I had I, I, you know yourself I had three like grand mal seizures and you know seizures are meant to last like quite quickly I think mine's were going for like three or four minutes so I'd let I'd let one in the house I had another one in the hospital and then I had a, a, a third one, which I always remember. I said that to my missus. I said, I always remember turning to my missus in the hospital and just saying, I just turned away for it as I was, I was away at arms. I thought I was going to die. And then mm-hmm. the, the drugs obviously kicked in. It must have come into my system. And then I found out that I had obviously an AVM, which is just a, I had a massive brain. I had a massive brain hemorrhage to the left side of my, my head. But I we didn't know what it, what it was caused by at the time. We thought it was like blood pressure, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. So... Um, I, yeah. At that time, I was all over the place. Uh, didn't, didn't, didn't know whether I was going to play again. Didn't know whether I was. Aye. But obviously, the, the medical staff, you know yourself, up at this, the, the old Southern, were incredible. Aye, I, I, I was uh, in the Southern for uh, four months, maybe. I mean, uh, go to the point where I felt all right and I still just wasn't getting the complete all clear. But 
I was probably the most fittest guy in the whole sport at the time, I think, jumping about hell with yeah. in the ward way and all that, but <laughs> just couldn't get out, mate. Do you know what I mean? Couldn't get uh, out for love nor money. When they let me out. <laughs> so it was uh, a bit worrying, the, mate. The, but... thing, the things they do up there is incredible. Like that, like that. I always remember when I went in to get the, the embolisation, so that's like the glue in my brain. And I right. remember being in, I went in for it on the Monday morning, and I was in intensive care on the Tuesday, and I think I was in high dependency on the Wednesday. And I played the Saturday against Celtic. Yeah, that's unbelievable. What was the first like, thing? See, the first thing I, the first back, thing I when I woke up, the first thing I woke up when I done when I woke up was can I play Saturday? And the, the, she always took the first. My missus fell out of me when they speak to me. I was like, I don't. Yeah, I was going to say that. How did your family take that when you went back to play so quickly? Because my missus wouldn't even was, let me go. And the girl did myself. You know what I mean? I uh, she she was a wee bit. Thing, because obviously you know, but I always remember the first day back. I think I, I, think I get put in the head. I think it was like to me. Oh, I sprung fuck, back up. Happens, I, sp- I sprung back up and like everything's like that. But it's like it's not really you that thinks about it. It's other people, aye. and they're all like, aye. oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, do you know what? This is going to happen. I had uh, my my dad had a brain hemorrhage, right? And the first he wasn't allowed to even leave the house for ages. But the first time we went back to a game, it was Celtic versus AC Milan in the Champions League, and the, the AC Milan players were warming up before the game, right? And Pirlo hit a shot, and it was, it's the only time he's never hit the target, I think, right? <laughs> and it went over the bar, and the person in front of him has jumped up and stopped it, and it was it was honestly about a foot away if he scalped my dad right in the head, and it would have killed him. It would have killed him straight out, do you know what I mean? And everybody around about is like, oh, because he hadn't been there for so long, do you know what I mean? Oh. Uh, and I can tell what you're saying there. Like, see, I bet you the training just completely stopped. stopped. I thought it was, it was like proper, uh, you could hear a pin drop, and I'm yeah. like, I'm fine. It was like, I get told to wear one of the helmets, like Peter Czech, and I'm like, I'm going to wear one of them. I'm going to wear one of them. Why? I said, because that just becomes a target. People just want to throw elbows in my head or that. I don't really care. If I'm going to get hit in the head, I'm going to get hit in the head. It's as simple oh. as that. I mean, it's, it may, might sound, no, might sound blase, what, but that's the way I, I, I rock. <laughs> and mate, you're here to tell the, <laughs> you're here to tell the story. Do you know what I mean? Do, do you know who well, I'm here? Yeah, what I want to know. Yeah, what I want to know. Did Jimmy Calder would visit you when you were in the hospital? No, he didn't. He didn't, but he... Fucking he, he, hell! He was in the paper. He was the manager. <laughs> He was, no. no, he was the manager at the time, but he he contacted me numerous occasions, and it was Craig Brown who was the manager at the time, and Craig and Archie Knox were absolutely brilliant with me. Honestly, and the, the staff at Aberdeen were, were superb at the time, and they looked after me very, very well, and I was grateful that I was in their, their, their type of care and, and help, you know what I mean? Tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us this one, right? Aye. Because... Um, <laughs> Niall, Niall, I know what you're going to ask. Aye, I know, I'm jumping no, up. And, and, no, but Gredo, you can ask that one. I'm going to ask something else here, right? right. Niall McGinn touched on this. He says that Craig Brown lived above him and Archie Knox lived below him. And he says there was a stream of women going into Craig Brown's <laughs> gaff. Right? Is Craig Brown the shagger that we're led to believe it is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Should he have been top shagger in the Patreon teammates' and questions? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he came up there, aye. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's he's just he's just he's just a he's just a he's just a, honestly one of the nicest men you'll ever meet. Do you know what I mean? And I, I can see whether he maybe attracts the other. Ah, he's got the woman, isn't he? Uh, he's, 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 he's a big <laughs> <laughs> ride, isn't he? <laughs> he's brilliant. No. Uh. <laughs> see, see, I. So, what is it before? See, before we go into the quiz, because we love that Archie Knox story. Aye, Mark the Reynolds one. Uncle Shite Bag. Oh, when you went runners off. Aye. Oh. <laughs> what were you, Jamie? Were you spunk of your shite bag? Oh no, he, that was. Still to this day, I, I couldn't believe he'd done it. He just went running every single one. He's like shite, shite, shite. Nay, nay, spunk. You see that? Nay, spunk. Shite, shite, shite. Pointed at me. Pointed at me and went like, don't know anything about goalkeeping. Shite, 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 shite. <laughs> he, 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 he turned around to Josh McGuinness and turned around and went like, you're the worst player, the worst football player I've ever seen in my entire career. You're fucking hopeless. You're shite. None of that. Shite, shite, shite. And you're like that. Big Josh started the next game. <laughs> 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 but he was brilliant. 
Archie's the only guy I know that could they could put his shoes, his socks and shoes on before he put his trousers on. <laughs> Used to do that. <laughs> Proper old school. Oh, Aye, but that, 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 that was his story, but was he you know, you know ball naked when he was staying in Spunker's shine bag? No, not naked. His, t- his towel was up to here. He'd have his white towel on up to here. And he'd just go around every day going, shite, shite, shite. Oh. That was the noise he made. And he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, absolutely man. superb, man. Superb. One of the best stories I've heard, honestly. That's brilliant, man. Okay, right. So just before uh, we, we let you go, Jamie, we, we do a, <laughs> we do a uh, 90 second quiz. Do you want to take care for here, Bob, or do you want me to keep going? Aye, that's the one. It's bunker straight back. Right, so, Jamie, every week on Football Daft, we put our guest Scottish football knowledge to the test We our 90 second quiz. Top of the leaderboard is John Sutton and Chick Young. Joint top on 15, Mark Wilson and Keith Lazar are tucked in behind with 14, while the good doctor Kenny Duker and Kevin Harper are just behind in third place with 13. Other selected scores include Andy Gorham on 8, Lee Miller 6 and Barry from EastEnders on 4. And at the bottom, it's a tie between Peter Lovenkranz, Derek Johnson, Craig Levine and Mick Sue Paterlinen. Anybody you'd like to beat on that list there, Jamie? Mick Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Same bottle day for me. <laughs> but but you can't, Jamie. You can't pass. You must give an answer, right? right okay. it, it doesn't need to be the right answer, Jamie. No. Right, you can Aye. say right. whatever you want. Do you right. want me? Do you want me to do the questions just to since Bob's Aye, go was a wee bit two settings, right? So go you can't it. pass. And Joe, you got your 97, 90 seconds ready. Yep. Right. <clears throat> right, and go. Connor Salmon currently plays for which Scottish club? Falkirk. What Scott is currently in charge of MK Dons? Russell Martin. Where did St Mirren finish in the Premiership last season? Eight. What was the score in your testimonial game? 1-0 Aberdeen. Who left the air job this week? Mark Kerr. Who scored the only goal in a League Cup final at the weekend? John Rooney. Cristiano Ronaldo currently plays for which team? Juventus. How many appearances did you make for Rafe Rovers while on loan? 12. New Central Park is the home to which team? Cowden Bees. What club was Thomas Tuchel at before Chelsea? Hearts. Which team, which team, <laughs> which team did Rangers draw in the Europa League? Slavia <laughs> Frag. When, when did St Mirren last win the Scottish Cup? 87. And what season did you win the League Cup? <laughs> In 2014. What Scottish Premiership have adopted Love is in the Air as a song? Don't you write it. Who is temporary in charge at Inverness? Neil McCann. What club are nicknamed the Diamonds? Here to What is the capacity of Hamden to the nearest thousand? 59. How many English Premiership sides play in Claret and Blue? Two. Ran out, ran, out, ran out of questions. Oh my god, that's, oh, that's never happened. I, I think you might have won this, by the way. No. Aye, but I just still can't kind of believe fucking Thomas Ducal left hearts, man. <laughs> but listen, see, see when a big job and Chelsea comes up, you've got to take Aye. it. <laughs> I thought you said Thomas Logo. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, fucking Grado was stuttering like a fucking know, man, shite and shaking dog trying to answer it. Right, again, right. So, Jamie, just a quick question, right? You said that you made 12 appearances for Wraith Rovers. Was that including cup games? Aye. Right, okay. <laughs> Don't worry, I've yeah, double-checked this one this Aye. week. I've double-checked this you? one. Let's go through your all answers, Jamie. Um, St Mirren finished ninth in the Premiership last season. Oh, right. Wraith um, Rovers, this is the one that I know why Chris was asking. I checked that it would be at five appearances for Wraith Rovers while on loan. Does that ring a bell? Aye. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> New Central Park is the home to Kelty Hearts, not Cowden Beath, but it's Cowden Beath right. Central Park. Um, Thomas Tuchel um, was a uh, PSG, no hearts. Um, <laughs> Hamden. Oh, tom- ah, tomato. <laughs> And the capacity closest to uh, 1,000 is 52,000. And there's three uh, teams in the English Premiership playing Clark and Blue, Villa, Burnley and West Ham. But, totaling up the score, I think, looking up, you've just missed out on kind of joint third. You've got 12, Jamie. 
Oh, that's I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. That's good gone, man. That's good, that good gone, Scott. You beat, you beat Mick, Sue. So. Aye. 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 Fucking, we don't say this a lot to our guests, like no blowing smoke, but this has been one of my favourite interviews, Aye, man, honestly. Without a night, man. Really without a night, it's really been worth the wait, big man. It's been worth waiting for. It's been worth waiting 13 months for me, honestly. <laughs> and, uh, I've enjoyed it as well. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Audio Frontier.